Greetings. Welcome to Midday Meditation here at the Cathedral of St. Philip in Atlanta. I'm Thee Smith. I'm your priest for today at our Episcopal Church service of commemorating the feast of James Otis Sergeant Huntington, uh, a monastic founder, founder of a monastic order in the Episcopal Church, and uh, a tireless social gospel uh, uh, advocate in our church. He was born in the year 1854, but deceased in 1935 uh, in June of that year. We observe his, uh, his, his uh, commemoration on today on November 25th, because this was the date that he took his monastic vows, which was the key part of his life and witness. We'll say more about him in a moment after we begin with a prayer, a collect in his honor. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. By the way, this collect is especially appropriate for our time. You'll hear it immediately. Preserve your people, O God, from discouragement in the face of adversity, as you did your servant, James Huntington, knowing that when you have begun a good work, you will bring it to completion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, interesting life. Born in 1854, a decade or so before the end of our Civil War, and so uh, he came of age during that era, uh, after, after the, as the Civil War ended. Uh, he was born into a New England family where his father had been the uh, prof professor at Harvard University, but converted from being a Unitarian, which was the spiritual home of Harvard, to becoming an Episcopalian, and then was forced to leave his professorship his father, Frederick. So uh, James was born into a family that already paid the cost for convictions, religious faith convictions. He grew up then with that kind of background and temperament. His father later became Bishop of Central New York. Huntington himself did, attended Harvard uh, and then his father's diocesan seminary in Syracuse, New York, where he, uh, after his own ordination, served several congregations there in Syracuse. But at a retreat in Philadelphia, he was convinced of a call to the religious life. And so with two friends, he established in 1881 a monastic house uh, serving the German immigrant community in lo the Lower East Side of New York City. Uh, and that grew into Holy Cross Church and eventually uh, the Holy Cross Order. Uh, his friends left him, uh, but others came and he persisted, uh, finally taking vows um, on November 20th, 25th in 1884, taking vow, monastic vows for life. So he was a follower of the, our Anglo-Catholic tradition and a social gospel uh, advocate, co-founding the Knights of Labor and founding the Church Association for the Advancement of the Interests of Labor. He was constantly traveling, speaking, organizing, encouraging, and writing to further the interests of working people. His habit, he wore a white habit as, a, as his monastic uh, garment, and uh, it was very prominent on uh, the stages of labor rally, rallies that he often attended. And he was a follower of the economist Henry George, who advocated for land labor taxing, uh, land labor taxes, a way of taxing land ownership that would distribute wealth throughout a society. Uh, it's a peculiarly American alternative to capitalism, and I commend it to you, especially in these times where we are polarized around uh, the terms socialism uh, and capitalism and that debate. So take a look at Henry George for an American um, alternative to our current economic life, advocated by um, James Huntington. Constantly preaching, leading parish and clergy retreats, he was also sought after uh, to be a spiritual director. So he combined both social activism, 
social justice activism with spiritual life and, uh, and teaching and, uh, and mentoring. Thousands of people looked to him for direction and spiritual advice. He maintained a voluminous correspondence with hundreds of people, rarely ceasing to write as he rode the trains going from one destination to another. But he did not get a stress-free life. He was tempted to leave the religious order uh, because he was invited to be rector of the Church of the Advent in Boston. Um, but uh, And he also was uh, in some despair often over, on occasion, on a several points, at several points over the inward looking tendency of some of the brethren of his own order, their, their inability to go with him, the distance toward social justice. Um, he also suffered a depression which lasted for some years and then he was advised as many uh, suffering melancholy in his time to take a long European tour and he emerged from that period both stronger and gentler, it said. Um, by the time he got back to the States, social gospel activism had become more embraced by the wider church and the labor movement was established here in the United States. Um, he was both uh, gentle in character and a firm social justice advocate in a way that helped move the Episcopal Church from being uh, more of a bastion of privilege, as it's called, to an advocate for the well-being of working people. Uh, he showed many how to combine Christian holiness and Christian radicalism. His generous spirit also showed in his community life. He would loyally yield when new leadership would emerge, new policies were being decided, new concerns coming to the fore. Um, and so he, uh, he inspired many to follow both the monastic life as well as the social gospel. Anglo-Catholic Christianity, social justice, and monastic community were the three pillars of his life and witness to our Lord. But it's his purity of heart that his disciples remember most in the order of the Holy Cross. At his deathbed in 1935, he's quoted as saying of his brethren, not all of whom he agreed with, tell them I love them, I will always intercede. Blessed James Otis Sergeant Huntington, intercede for us. Amen. The gospel appointed for his observance is from the gospel of John, where our Lord says, all that the Father has given me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. An appropriate gospel for this commemoration and inviting us to also embrace the self-giving life, the life of self-giving love in honor of the one who commissions us, our heavenly, our heavenly creator. And the epistle appointed for the feast of James Huntington is appropriate for his order of the Holy Cross. It's Galatians 6.14, in which Paul writes, May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. And so in honor of, of uh, all of us, as we strive to be part of the new creation, let us observe this uh, commemoration and uh, celebrate it with appropriate intercessions and commitments. I invite your intercessions on behalf of those who are on your hearts and minds and circumstances that, uh, that you are committed to in your own life and witness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church 
may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, remembering our Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Rob, and the Holy Father in Rome, Francis. May they be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially our President Donald, our Governor Brian, our Mayor Keisha, and the Congress and the courts, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do all, to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially those leaving us in this life due to the pandemic and those on our hearts and minds right now. I invite you to name in your heart or out loud the dearly departed whom you pray for. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom, remembering especially James Huntington. And now I invite your own intercessions, again, for those names, persons, and circumstances that are on your heart and mind. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us say together, pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now receive this benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.